but I'm it's so, so good happy. to see you and to connect with you again. <laughs> We're going to share this video. So, with everybody. Perfect. This is my first time, by the We're way. We're going to, you're going to add me as a collaborator and then I can share it also on my oh, okay. um, hand. Uh, so... Talking about uh, the amazing business you set up, the book you wrote, Radical Ownership, where you teach people uh, mind and body habits that uh, benefit their overall well being and health. So tell us a little bit about your story and how you're now pivoting your business. I know. Um, it's such an exciting time. Um, just, I invited you to join, but I don't know how to, um, do anything different to get, you can't share this no. Uh, and so afterwards, when we finish, you, uh, oh, yeah, you can share. Okay, okay, cool. share video and you can add me as a collaborator oh, afterwards. Okay, cool. I can share it as well. Perfect. I'll do that. So, um, so much has happened since our last chat, um, which is, um, yeah, which is very exciting, uh, recently. So yes, I did write my book, uh, last year, um, after, um, uh, running a coaching business for four years, uh, helping people to take radical ownership of their health and life through habits, which is something that I became super passionate about after going through stage three back cancer. Uh, myself and um, recovering in a way that I never thought it was possible. Uh, so I started sharing my message and it was really interesting that, you know, there was a common thread in my clients, like now just to picture like what was happening in my life when I was diagnosed with cancer, I wasn't on social media, uh, on any social media. And I fully focus on my recovery. And my motivation was um, really my kids and I wanted to live a long and healthy life. So, you know, I didn't get distracted with all this noise on social media or, you know, like coaching other people or the thought of it. So I was very much focused on my own journey. And I think that's why I, I really achieved some incredible results as well. Um, but with my clients, I think when I started my business was in 2020, you know, COVID had just hit and there was a lot of uh, people online, you know, people with time as well on their hands. And, you know, they would come to me, they would be drawn by my message because they wanted to heal parts of themselves that they felt that they were still stuck. But their ultimate motivation was to help other people. And you know they really felt that calling to you know uh, you know i've done uh, some of my healing you know you, you help me with this part of the healing and then i can go and help others you know they were drawn by not only my story of health but my story of leaving my corporate job and going all in in my business right and um you know and i kind of like you probably feel this as well and you have felt this in your journey because we have so many similarities when we talk, um, you know, especially off camera when we can just go crazy. <laughs> um, you know, I, I was receiving these signs, you know, from God or the universe, you know, this is what you need to do to help people. You need to help them to share their stories. And I was trying to ignore those messages. No, but I'm so passionate about health and I want to help people with their health. Um, and I kept receiving the same message over and over again. And when I published my book and I wrote my book in eight months and, you know, I, I wrote the whole thing, you know, I didn't use a ghostwriter or anything like that. I really wanted to write my own book. Um, I kind of felt that there was a closure on that part of my life. Now I am the healthiest I've ever been and I'm 44 now. It's been six years since the diagnosis. And I feel that, um, you know, that part of me, you know, that, that created that disease and uh, it's, it, it's no longer alive. You know, that part is gone. I've had, I've let go of that person so much that I can't um, identify with that anymore. And once I wrote my book and I really wanted to write the book because at the beginning of my journey, I read a couple of books 
um, you know, without knowing much about uh, the story, just picking up from a title, um, you know, the two ladies who wrote their own stories that they had cancer, they, the book was not very empowering and it was not very uh, positive. And I know that the cancer world is not a very positive world. I, I am very, very aware of that. But I wanted to write this book to be that light at the end of the tunnel because that is a book that I wish I had read at the beginning of my journey. You know, I take the reader through this, you know, self-discovery journey. Uh, this is how we can create disease and disarm in our body. And this is how we can take our power back. So once I wrote that, it was kind of that closure. So I was kind of ready yeah. to, to go all in again and to change again. And, you know, one thing that uh, you learn if you go through a life freshening disease is that you really learn that life is short and our time here is limited. You know, if you, if you are, if you are dead to hear the calling and to, and to learn your lesson, you know, and I really, really promised myself that I wasn't going to live a life that wasn't true to myself anymore. And I wasn't going to live in fear. I wasn't going to live for others, you know, live thinking like, no, I'm going to do this because of what others think of me. So for me, you know, the change that I've done most recently to changing, to pivot, uh, to helping female health coaches to launch their first online offering 90 days without burnout, which is still a very much passion of mine, you know, like not compromising your health. It's just being a organic um, progress of my own journey as well. Yeah. So tell us a little bit more about this offering rise and launch that you have now. So I am running a free challenge next week uh, for three days live training. And, and, and again, you know, it always stems from my why of I don't want people to go through what I went through at the start of my business, right? Like you go around in circles, you know, going from, you know, one thing to another, not knowing what to actually do, you know, yeah. to actually, you know, share your story and, and work with people and get financially rewarded for it. You know, there is so much that goes into it. There is mindset. There is the imposter syndrome. There is, um, there is action around sales and marketing. There is, um, you know, how you tell your story. You know, like how do you actually go about telling your story? Um, there is so much into it. There is all the tech stuff that look at us today. You're still kind of navigating through it, right? Um, you know, there is self-confidence. There is self-worth. I would say that, you know, cancer was kind of like an apprenticeship uh, before like starting my business. Like I healed at a whole, like I, I healed a lot of myself during cancer treatment. But when you start a business, you have to get ready to heal at a whole different level. Yeah. Because you really face a lot of your fears a lot of your, you know, self-doubt, imposter syndrome, a lot of the things that, you know, if you want to really make your business as a real business, a business that make money, you need to put yourself in an uncomfortable place every single day. You need to have the discipline, the persistence to keep going. Right. So, you know, like the cancer was kind of like an apprenticeship, like <laughs> to, to, you know, to have, to really, um, prepare me for what was to come. Angelica, so tell us a bit more about the journey. You, you were diagnosed at chemotherapy for about a year, right? And that was the journey where you were on a self-discovery. How, how did you, how did it happen that you were slowly changing your habits? Because you know, it's, it seems to be all about that, changing your whole, first your habits, and then slowly but surely you're taking yourself with that. And then all of a sudden, you don't even recognize the person that went into the disease. Exactly. You know, um, I'm very um, cynical about all this, like, gimmickies that goes around the, you know, the internet these days, social media about, you know, supplements and products and, and, you know, shakes and things. And, you know, I didn't do any of that. I used the power of my own body, the power of my own mind, and I did the basics, which we all know that most people are not doing. 
You know, that's why 70% of people are suffering from a chronic disease. Um, you know, I started changing my diet. So that was the physical habit that I changed. Uh, because when the disease is already in your physical body, I also believe that, you know, there is a lot, lots of talks around, you know, people that are also very much into the natural uh, and non-conventional medicine and spiritual and all of that, that, you know, you can't just heal a sick body from your mind. Yeah. Right. Like your, 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 you know, the cancer was already inside my cells, you know, there was already a tumor, uh, there was already so much disease, uh, disharmony and issues around my body. So I needed to address that as well. So it was changing my diet very slowly. Again, I did not do anything drastic. You know, it was one meal at a time. Um, I started exercising uh, during chemo. So I pushed myself during chemo. Now, nobody told me to do that, but it was very apparent to me that turning up to chemo every single day or every single week, you know, and I had to go to hospital every, every week because I had a pick line, but, and I had to go there every two weeks for the, for the um, chemo session. Uh, it wasn't going to save me. Mm. You know, that was just a, um, you know, that was the path that I chose at the time. I had an emergency surgery and they told me this is stage 3B and you're going to have to have 12 sessions of chemo. Um, and at the time, I did not, you know, know everything that I know now. So I went into that conveyor belt. Uh, but it was very apparent that, you know, sitting at the reception, if anybody in this world could sit at the reception that I said for, you know, time and time over again, they would realize that uh, medication alone is not going to save us. Yeah. Right. And I know this is kind of like a big call. And I know that I know I'm not against doctors at all because I did chemotherapy. I, I, I completed the 12 sessions. But there is the other part of health, which is only you can do, right? And the doctors are not in charge of that. You are in charge of that, which is also a message that not everybody is ready to take on. Mm. And this is, again, why I wrote my book for the people that are ready to take on, right? So for me, it was about reading books. Um, and I read so much and watching documentaries. Like I said, I wasn't on social media. You know, I think now there is so much noise and distraction out there. So people, you know, if you're diagnosed with any sort of disease now, and if you're hanging around social media and you don't start making your own mind, you can get very confused. Mm. I feel so blessed that I wasn't part of that yeah. because I could fully focus on my healing. Yeah. You know, I would wake up every morning and think, you know, what will I do today to heal my body? What will I do? Uh, today to help my mind what will I do today to help my soul and I'll just keep doing that on repeat yeah which is really inspiring and that comes out in your book so beautifully Angelica and I'm you've learned so much you have really healed that version of yourself that had a disease to start with so and now you've helped many people on their health journey find better habits, whether that is through nutrition, through working out, you know, practices to help you even get in touch with yourself, right? Yes. Because I think already the first that we are just not taught or we are rarely ever sure that that is that we live by our, that what makes us feel good. So we walk in the right direction. We sort of follow the breadcrumbs of what feels good because we push ourselves yeah. into these and as i think of course men and women have um cancer and diseases but i think 80 percent of the autoimmune diseases are uh women i think we are pressing ourselves into these shapes to be more palatable to be good yeah. to be the, all the things that we are conditioned as, as women and I think that makes us sick as a collective and yeah. I think that that you've learned at skin that you've shed to be able to then become this health and life coach and now you know progressing more pivoting really to train other coaches so yeah. you are 
be spreading your wings, right? Because you are, uh, uh, you have more effect. You have more coaches who will help more people. So I just love that story, Angelica. And so tell us a little bit more about how that's going to work. You have your rise and launch. That's a challenge for next week. Yeah. Where are you? So, I mean, just, just want to highlight what you said there about the, the, the constant suppression that we live in a within, right? Especially as women or suppressing so we can be strong and not coming from a place of self-acceptance and self-love and self-compassion. Um, it's, it, it's actually harming our health big time. And our work life is a big part of it, right? Like, and I realize that, right? Like for me, you know, and I promise myself as, you know, if I'm happy, I am doing something. If I'm no longer happy, you know, I'm happy to change. And I think that, you know, we feel that we are stuck to things because, oh no, but you know, what about this? What about that? You know, but what about how I'm gonna pay my, my mortgage? How I'm gonna pay my bills? How I'm gonna, you know, I really feel that when we want to change something, we find a way right we really find a way to and i'm not saying that everything comes easy and everything is a you know all roses every day but it's important for us to connect ourselves and realize you know how is my work really affecting my my energy levels my you know how i feel every day right and you know and the people that i want to help is you know there's so many people out there that they have the same the kind of similar stories than me, you know, whether it's cancer or anxiety or, or an autoimmune disease, because the reality is um, doctors don't have an answer for most of those chronic diseases. So um, people are looking for answers, but they're wanting to learn from people who have conquered what, you know, the doctors haven't got the answer for, right? And people are is starting to kind of rising up and you know the awareness as a collective um we are starting to become more aware but we are a long way to go right we are long we're miles to go because health is not getting any better no. right like physical health and mental health so you know the people that i'm looking to work with people that have conquered a particular trans transformation journey like i did you know, because for me, you know, to come out of this and, and say to people, you know, if you do what I did, you will get results because I conquered cancer. So you can too, you know, and I didn't do anything crazy or dangerous. And I think we're living in a world these days that we want to learn from people who have done that. Yeah. And I love that you about radical ownership, title of your book. Angelica because you you're not some you know all out there you know person who thinks no you've worked with western medicine you've healed your body with chemotherapy and then you understood that there is a different part to your healing and that is taking real of uh, you know that version of yourself that um, thick or that I, I mean I so difficult for me to say that because I sometimes think, you know, sometimes there's also just happening in life, right? Yes. And, and this industry that is peddling us, you know, if we drink the green juice in the morning and if we do this and that, then we are, I do, sorry, I, that doesn't work. And I don't think it's the truth. And I've interviewed so many women where that is just not the truth. So I think we learn by hearing stories, you know, reading books like, radical ownership because we hear about someone who has been through it and who has really transformed lives and i think that is how we learn that is how we make sense of the world that's how we make sense of ourselves yeah. where personal becomes so collective and that for me is the easiest way of progressing and forging our own paths listening to people who have been through similar journeys yeah and that cancer right that could be any sort of uh disease yeah. uh that uh we have, have men and women yeah. but i think the story is so particularly um beautiful because you see it from a lens of a woman and you understood that 
that many things that potentially brought you to the point of a stage three bowel cancer diagnosis were hinging on this collective yeah. um, uh, uh, conditioning uh, because you're a woman and that we're always expected to do all all the many roles that we hold so well. And I'm not saying that men don't hold roles as well, yes. but I, um, that's what the beauty is in your story, which I think, Angelica, is why you have so much resonance, right? You have uh, so many listeners on YouTube. You do these uh, great videos that are really easy for people to access, easy to understand. It's a real how to. You went into into your chemotherapy and you felt you were stronger coming out yeah. from you which is really even just to put that out there and say this is a possibility and uh, not it is everybody's possibility but it is the possibility of some people and it's really worth giving it a try and here is you can do it I think what you said is so important there. Like, you know, I realized also earlier on in my, in my journey that, you know, you, you drink all the green juices, but if you're stressed, then you can't, you know, the green juices are not going to counterbalance the stress, right? So, and, and if, if you're working on a job that you don't like, that you hate, or if you're doing something that is not in alignment with you, you are going to, your health is going to suffer right because you are in some form like suppressing your deepest desire you know in, I, i'm not talking about woo -woo things i'm just talking about like waking up and dreading your day like i used to you know like that is harming everyone's health if that's what they're doing whether they like it or not you know that is the the action that is harming the physical health so we are not only physical beings but we are mental and emotional beings and if we keep doing that over and over again you know then we start creating you know disease in our body and disharmony or you know and or whatever it will pop up and i think you know our work like our life is a massive part of of our existence you know and and again i'm not i'm not trying to be like a dreamy person here to say like quit your jobs and and you know and and, and you know everything is going to be fine nothing easy you know will come like on a on a plat on a silver platter like, like nothing that is worthwhile right like that's that's the reality of it and i think again that is a message that not many people want to hear oh but i've tried it so but i've tried it have you really tried you know so, do you know how many times like i like drag myself out of bed during chemo you know to get to seven and a half months later to feel stronger than i you know, than when I started chemo, you know, I, do you know how hard I worked to have a clean colonoscopy? You know, do you know how hard I, I worked to get my first client, you know, to reach my first $10,000? I mean, all of it, you know, it didn't just knock on my door and just say, hey, Angelica, here we go. Yeah. yeah. Angelica, I love that you say that. And, you know, I think lately, especially I've interviewed various women who have still got their day job. But because they weren't fulfilled, they started their little side hustle. That is their purpose and they're yeah. chiseling away at it. So I always think there are many ways to get there. And it's not necessary and and all this or all that. No. Right. So I think this is, I think we have to get away from thinking that our lives have to be in a certain way and you know, I'm gonna this and I'm going to do this when it doesn't when something doesn't sit right with you anymore and I think you teach that so beautifully then you listen to these inner voices that tell you that this is not right for you and you find ways slowly but surely no one yeah. is asking you to take drastic decisions I mean sometimes a drastic decision in terms of nutrition is needed or yeah waking up and really understanding what I'm doing to my body at this point in time is really bad yeah, but I think that all the other decisions uh, in transforming our lives, these come slowly and they knock on your door um, quietly. And you know, at one point you have to listen because then 
then you're on your journey to healing whatever you need to heal whether that's a physical disease or a mental uh, disease or 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 emotion that you don't know how to handle there are so many ways and i think that you teach people with all kinds of um this right not just disease but really just also feeling like something isn't right yeah i think what you said is so like the example that you gave about you know like the the you know sometimes a drastic uh, you know a thing is you know it's needed you know like for the nutrition exercise but i also think that you know sometimes we have to make decisions in our lives that will change um our lifestyle or you know for example if you're working in a job that you absolutely hate and you know that that is the core of your disease you know but you would attach to the financial reward they want a six figure salary and you can't live without you know the mortgage the car the handbag it's, it, we've got to start making some conscious decisions around how we want to live our lives you know like i chose not to work during chemotherapy and i know so many people they have to work but there are so many people also they choose to work right because i realized that it wasn't possible for me to achieve the healing that i needed to achieve whilst working it was a calling for me to really focus on myself only you know it, it was quite serious you know i was only 38 years old you know it was kind of life of that thing if i didn't receive if i if that wasn't serious enough what would be serious yeah do you know what i mean so i think, I think also we live in a world that we need to start really thinking about you know am i going to keep this job or uh, because uh, I want to keep this lifestyle so people, you know, think that I'm doing well or, you know, that I have all of this material stuff, you know, or, you know, am I not going after my dream because I'm, I'm scared to start from the bottom, you know, yeah. and, I, and I don't want to put myself out there, you know, it's, there is so much into it, you know, I, you know, and I love the work that you do. You know, I celebrate every woman that is out there putting themselves out there every single day, you know, to share their mission because it's not easy. It's easy for people that sit on the sidelines, you know, judging and thinking like it is easy for them, but it's not, you know, yeah. it's really not. So taking action is always the key to any transformation in any area of your life. Yeah. And I think the nice thing is, Angelica, that you can put the inspiration, the motivation and the mentoring out there. And then it is for people to take their own decisions. You know, you're not telling people, not telling people what they have to do. Yeah. We inspire you in your way and she can in our way to take inspiration and bring off people that are here in the world to potentially help you with whatever it is that you need help in this case that is people um feeling uh, dis-ease right yeah. and i i just i'm so grateful to 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 be chatting to you today angelica and i'm so proud of you and when i look at your story it fills me with unbelievable amounts of hope because that these stories just change this picture of uh, hopelessness in the world where we have so many challenges, people get sicker you know, than ever before and uh, burnout rates are on the rise. And you know, if we look at data, it's, it's daunting. And I think the story like your story that you've really transformed your life and you've made into your superpower Power, that experience that is a real challenge and was a life and death situation you have really turned it to a point where you are helping so many other people and that to me is just perfection it's <laughs> thank you so much beautiful you know i would like to touch like last time we we connected um uh, and i think maybe you know that would be beautiful for us to touch on this live uh, we spoke about this um, uh, competition in between women, right? Like, and I know that you are very passionate about helping uh, women, um, you know, empowering women with your platform, which is so, so powerful. Uh, and I am passionate about empowering women because, you know, part of my story, and I actually just made a post about introducing myself on um, 
uh, today, you know, I was born in Brazil, which co I come from a very chauvinistic culture. And I left Brazil at 21 years old because I didn't see myself fitting in in that culture uh, because there was some uh, things that were expected of a woman you know, and a girl that I thought, I don't want to do any of this. You now get married, have kids and, you know, live with your parents and then go to your husband's house and, you know, and all of that. And, you know, I wanted to feel, to experience freedom before I made the decision to, to do anything like that. You know, I am happily married. I've been happily married for 20 years. I have two beautiful kids. Um, and, but at that time, I felt that that wasn't what I wanted to do. And, and I left Brazil. I went to Spain. I lived in Belgium, in, in London, uh, in England, in, in New Zealand, and I live now in Australia. And I thought that women uh, only kind of behaved in their way in Brazil. But what I didn't realize is that everywhere I went, there were some similarities in the way that women behaved. And, you know, this whole, the feminism, you know, movement and the empowerment and movement around women, I believe that it needs to come from the way that we conduct ourselves as opposed to, you know, something that we, you know, fight against men, right? Um, and I'd love to kind of, you know, us to touch a little bit on that because, you know, we're both um, really working on that same kind of that same passion to empowering women um, and just, you know, bringing your thoughts around it because I think, you know, there's the way that we speak about it, it, it can be different, you know, depending on the platform that you're using and the people that are speaking from their own experience. And, you know, I, I love my husband and I'm not, you know, and he's very kind man and he's very loving and he's everything I've ever dreamed of you know, for, and, and I don't, I never thought about this whole idea of men being against women. Yeah, no, I don't think that that's the case. Right. And so I think we, well, at she can, we try and really keep the vibe very high because this is not a, a women against men exercise is not a men bashing ex exercise. We are here to tell women. So we inspire others who forge their path. It's so much easier to be what you can see. And I think we don't have that. We don't have enough women's stories in our history books. We've been written out of history books. We simply don't have enough women's stories. And yes, we do. The spaces we inhabit as women, most of those spaces have been created by men for men because yeah. historically in those spaces, we weren't able to take decisions on how to create those spaces. So I think there is so much work to be done for all of us, men and women, to change that. But I think we have that movement as women. And then we have to get all our beautiful men on board to change those spaces and make room and look collectively what that looks like when women are at the table making decisions with men. And we now know from data and science that space are better with more diversity. And yes. I for women and to pitted against one another. And and you were talking about that earlier. We were pitted against each other, right? That is a collection we live with. It's a conditioning and we need to unravel that now. The next generations are very different. Um, yeah. both girls or women and also boys and girls and, and, and men and women. So I think, you know, every one of us has been very aware of the situations. I think we have to tell so many more stories to really get to the nitty gritty of how to go forward. We do. We have really great um, results now in terms of listeners. And yeah. so I think to me, that's the solution. I mean, there are many solutions, right? There are yeah. many women who think we don't need to be empowered. We have the power. Yes. We just have yes. one space of getting, uh, you know, having actual room in the space wherever they want to um, be impactful. Mm. And I think it's up to every single one. It's literally one story at a time. That's yes. how I see. It. And many people think with 
well, we're already dealing with it, right? Dealing with it in inverted commas. Yes. And I think we are dealing with it in a lot of different spaces, but there is so much more work to do. Exactly. You know, if you look at the data that there's 2% money going to women founders only in 98 percent of women founders well you know look at all the innovation we're missing out on on the great companies mm -hmm. missing out on all the ventures yeah. that amazing women are setting up so i think there is so much room uh, for change that is much needed that every one of us yeah. is just continuing on this journey to be as impactful as humanly possible and raising up women's stories because they show how it's mm. possible and if she can do it i can do it yeah and and you know just to look back with my story you know a big part of my story was you know that of my disease was that the idea that i had to be everything for everyone and i had to be strong all the time and i had to suppress all my needs and you know that made me sick yeah. and this is why i'm so passionate about uh you know helping female uh health coaches to launch their first uh offer without the burnout because you know i promised myself i can't afford another burnout i can't compromise on my health anymore so if what you said that, that is so like important we don't need to be empowered we already have the power and all we need to do is to tap into our power you know women need to be you know and i have worked with many women and you probably have too you know i can't ask my husband to do the dishes or to do you know yes you can you know and that is the kind of thing you know it it is a two-way thing right like it's it, it is a so it is just saying i'm tired i'm not gonna do that could you please help me in a kind way you know you know it's working as partners right um and i'm you know i'm not not getting involved in relationships that are not right now i mean you know involved in relationships that are you know that are going well right like it, it is up to us to put our hands up and say you know i need help here yeah that is how we are going to change. And I see that so much because I have a daughter and she's 10. And I realized that for me was, I was teaching her just to be strong all the time. Yeah. Not, not to, to uh, voice her needs and her opinion and, and, you know, what she really wanted. You know, when she visited me after my emergency surgery, um, she was four years old and I was holding on to my tears and she looked at me and said, mommy, what are the, what is this water in your eyes? I, mm. you know, she, she was four and she had never seen me crying. And I thought to myself, why am I doing this? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. We are doing, can you see like, it's my responsibility, right? I had to change. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think I've been talking about this with another woman I interviewed that we can't ever publish emote and we are emotional beings and women are i mean i'm i'm sure men are too but i think that you know that we always have to have it all so together that is yeah. just not what reality looks like on the no. end and so i think we all need to learn that what we're expected to be and how good we need to be and elise lunen wrote a whole book about it on our best behavior there yeah. is things we need to work on and so i think we need to tell the stories we need to show the examples so everyone is aware ah see this just happened i need to yes. work on it. so i need to change that and i need to make other people around me aware of what needs to change exactly and then, and I, i'm gonna have to leave you soon because at 10 <laughs> o'clock i have an interview <laughs> so grateful that you that we got to connect because I know. We set out to, we planned it, and then I'm so sorry it, I couldn't make it work from my end. But if you share me now yes, as a collaborator, I, I think then I can um, get this live as well on my side, which would be so lovely. And I'm so grateful for our chat. And me I'm too. so excited for what's in store for you. And we will keep people updated on the Shikan platform with what's going on with Thank you. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you so much, Stephanie, for this time and for everything. And I will, I'm sure I'm going to chat with you very soon. Yes, you will. Bye. Take care.